All right, in today's man tip, we are going to be replacing the float switch on a GE brand dishwasher. Um, the problem that we're finding is that it is not heating. So I've already gone through, as you can see, we have the heated dry is supposed to be on, but it is not heating after the cycle. I've already gone through and checked to make sure that the drying fluid is not empty, it is not empty. I have done a visual inspection of the heating coil itself to make sure it's not cracked or anything. Uh, I'm, I know it goes under as well, so I don't think there's any damage to that, but there could be some that I haven't seen yet. So that makes the next possible uh, issue, the float switch that is down in here. So today we're gonna be replacing that. I ordered a replacement off of Amazon, OEM part, about $22. So let's see what we got. A little bit more information about the float switch. The float switch is an interlock that allows the heating element to work after you have run a cycle of dishes. If the float switch is not sensing correctly or senses that the water level is too high or too low, or I'm not exactly sure what, how it's broken, it will not allow the heating element to get hot enough to steam dry the dishes because I assume it's trying to prevent fires. As always when doing anything electrical, first step, go. Turn off the, uh, I think that says dish, and I guess that's disposal dishwasher. I've already flipped the breaker. So let's go make sure we're off. All right, as you can see, the breaker is correctly flipped because all buttons are off and nothing is on. Now, in order to get to all this, we gotta take the basket out. Let me go ahead and just put that on the floor. Let's see if I can find a place where you all can see what's going on still. All right, so I got this view set up. In order to get to here, the first thing we're gonna need to do is take out that bad boy. I'm not sure what it's called. It's called the water spout thingy. And then these come out. the water filter you might want to clean that's a good time to clean that out this is the drains where all the gunk collects might be a good time to clean that out anyway and we're taking off all these parts as you see the float switch is here now I have done a little reading and watching of my own videos on this and it says it's very important to make sure you get all the water out of this little catch down here because when you take the switch out it opens directly the floor and this wa collects water here so we're gonna use paper towels and get out as much water as we can this is probably gonna be pretty gross because this is where all the trash water collects towels try and make sure you get it all as much as you can and whew, yep that definitely smells kind of ripe it smells like Craig after five minutes on a peloton make sure you get it all out of there Could break out the shop vac and suck out all the water, but let's be honest, these are all meant for Al and he probably doesn't have shop vac anyway. He's got a dust buster. Ooh, yeah, this definitely stinks. So that'll be the last one. I got most of the water down out here. Now, it's 
hard to tell, but if you can kind of see, there are two little nuts here. One nut here, one nut back there. Probably gonna need a nut driver to get to them. I don't think a socket will fit. Let's see what I got. Just discovered I can get a little more light in here by turning on the flash of the video camera. So I'm feeling a little better. I'm going in now to remove these nuts. Again, there's one in the front, one back. I will say be careful because there is a drain down here. So you don't want to lose the nut. So I don't have a magnetic one. So I am going to be very careful when removing the plate out of here. Oh, hopefully you have blocked that with the arm. I hope I haven't done that in the past. Because I can't really see. Kind of a tight fit down here. All right, so now when I take this out, both nuts are with it. There's more water. This is your last chance to lift it up because when you take the switch out, there is a gasket and that is when you're gonna lose all your water to the floor if you lift up the switch without draining the water. Find paper towels, pardon me. Stuff it all down there real good. Make sure you get all the water. All right, nice and dry. Lift it up. As you can see, it is a standard. Ooh, that is gross. All right. Gotta work it out here. There it goes. All right, out with the old, and here we go, in with the new. See, it does have this little O-ring on it, that's what I'm talking about. That prevents the water from spilling to the floor. So we'll pop it in here. Push it down. And then we can start to button it back up. Put everything back in right where it came from. Again, make sure you don't lose these. Be careful with this. Make sure you don't lose these little screws down into the hole because then you're, having, you're in for a bad day. I'm trying to replace that or find those after they fall under your dishwasher. You're going to have to take the whole thing out and put the whole thing back in. That holds it in place, and they're good. Put the catch back in. Put 
this back in. During the break, I went and cleaned out the drain a little bit. Put that back in, make sure it's nice and locked. And then reattach the water sprayer. You have successfully replaced the float switch, which is an interlock for your heating element, on a GE model GDT 580SSF7SS dishwasher. Thanks for tuning in to Man Tips. Rock on. I will be back to let you know that it has successfully worked after we run a cycle on the dishwasher.